Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rosette with BuildBox. This is part three of how to make a simple driving game with BuildBox video series. I hope you enjoyed parts one and two. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's uh, exit out of this preview and let's start adding some points in to our game so that this looks a little bit, uh, looks a little bit better. So we're gonna go to our 3D world. Let's go to our first scene and then let's uh, double click on points and let's uh, let's set this tool these tools up so that they give our our player points. So um, uh, for right now, uh, this add point node on the uh, tools is a little bit old, so we're going to delete this and we're going to get the new add point node. So we're going to go over here and search for add point, and uh, we're going to bring out the new one. This is the new and, and improved one that we're going to use, and we're going to enable it here so that um, when we collide, uh, we're we're going to add a point. Um, next, um, we're going to change that the affected asset is the character. So when we collide with the character, then we add the point. Um, and then it's going to remove the tool. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this uh, 3D model uh, right here because, uh, sorry, I'm situating my chair. Um, I, I, uh, I want to get rid of this 3D model. I don't like the glowing effect and I'm going to show you a different glowing effect. Um, so, okay, this looks good to go. Now let's go back to our 3D world. Let's drag our points into our scene here and let's zoom in and get this you know, nice and where we want it. Okay, so looks good, looks good. I like the placement, we kind of want it in the middle of the road and I want to do it you know, so that it's on either this side or this side of the road. Okay, next, let's add in a light to make this look cooler. So I'm gonna add in a little point light here. I just grabbed a point light here from the special effects or from the lights menu. And then I'm gonna back this up just a little bit so that it is right behind the tools. Okay, and then uh, let's change the intensity to something about like 10. And then let's change the range to something like three. Yeah. Okay, cool. That looks good. I don't want to go too far outside of these white lines and the yellow line. I kind of want it to stay um, pretty close uh, to the uh, to to you know fitting in the lane. So let's do something like two point five. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's we can even do two point four. Okay, cool. Yeah, so get it something like that. And then the other really cool thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this point light here in the outliner and we're gonna drag it and we're gonna drop it inside of the points so that the point light becomes a child of the points and now the points is the parent. So when we remove, when the, it collides the character and it removes the tools, it's also going to remove the light, um, which is really what we want. And then one last thing that I thought would be really cool here for our tools is wouldn't it be nice if this thing rotated? So let's go ahead, let's add, exit out of here, let's go to movement and let's go to our uh, rotate and let's bring out a rotate node. Let's hook it up and then let's change the rotation to 100 in the Y direction, okay? And then uh, let's go ahead, that looks great. Um, let's make um, a, a copy of it. And you can make copies with, um, of things in BuildBox with W, A, S, or D. So I'll press D and that made a copy for me. And then what's really nice is I can actually select this yellow square here in the middle. And this allows me to move this object around along the, that plane. So it stays at the same height it stays at the same height, but I'm able to, you know, move it around freely, okay? So I'm actually gonna press uh, Control-Z, 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 I'm gonna go back because I accidentally selected point light instead of points. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to copy point, points instead. Um, so here we go, I'll press D. Then I'll go ahead and move this around so it's over here on this other lane up here more towards the front. Perfect, okay, cool. And I get to move it around freely and it stays at the same height. It's really, really, really convenient. Okay, cool, everybody uh, save your game real fast. It's good practice to always save your game and, and to make backups. So let's go ahead and let's see. Okay, awesome. Okay, so the light is uh, moving around a little bit with it and that's, that's okay. We need to position the light so that um, it's pretty close to the same position as, as the actual points. So let's take a look. So the position of the points is 0.572. Let's go ahead and try to do that. Let's do 0.572. Okay. 
And then let's do the uh, Z axis, the, or the Z uh, position. Let's make that line up. Okay, cool. And did I accidentally? Nope, okay, that worked. No, that's okay. You know what I think you need to do is you need to move it outside of the, uh, of the child. You can't make it a child anymore. And then what you do is you can change you can change it and it will be exact yeah exactly okay perfect 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 we'll line it up nice nice and perfect and then we'll go ahead and make uh, the point uh, or make the point um, the point light be a child of the points okay perfect and then let's go ahead and let's get rid of this one let's make a copy of this one just made a quick copy, Command C and uh, Command V, and then put that one over here. Okay, and then watch the rotation now. You see, it's not really rotating. The light isn't moving as much anymore. So that's perfect. Okay, and we're collecting the points, and it's the lights are going away, the points are going away, it's going great, but I don't know how many points I collected, and I don't know how many points I got. So let's add in some score labels. So let's exit out of the preview. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over here uh, to points and I'm going to um, hit these little three little dots and I'm going to export asset, okay? And uh, we're gonna call this a points label, all right? And I'm gonna save it to my desktop and it's gonna export a, a BB asset for me. Then we're gonna go into our 3D world UI. And we're gonna drag in we're gonna drag in that BB points label BB asset and then booyah, here we go. We got this really cool uh, label here. So let's go to, into our objects here and go into the objects node map. And we're gonna get rid of this if collide. We're gonna get rid of this add point. We're gonna get rid of this remove because we don't need that anymore. I do like the rotating, so we'll go ahead and keep that. And then we're gonna add in one more special node. We're gonna add in stick to edge, okay? And stick to edge, you wanna just uh, hook it up uh, like so. And we're going to go from the top. And what Stick to Edge does is it allows you to position things in a specific place on the screen and use use these um, metrics and these attributes as uh, references and, and as positioning um, tools. So uh, for, we're going to do a, about a vertical distance of about 180 from the top. Um, okay, perfect. And let's just let's just see what that looks like in our game. Okay, cool, that looks like a nice position. Okay, great, now we just need to show um, the number of the tools that we're getting. So let's go ahead and let's bring in another label. Uh, let's bring in a default font label here and we're gonna drag it in and put it right about here. And then we're gonna change the function to score type to current world for, uh, and then we're gonna change, uh, keep the score type as points. Um, then we're gonna do the amount as current the alignment as to left, and then we're gonna keep the default font and we'll go ahead and click stick to edge. So we'll press play. Okay, great. Um, I think it looks good. Um, the only problem is, is that font is a little bit boring, right? It look, I'm glad that we're able to, you know, count uh, our points now and I'm glad that it's working, but we want it to look a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create our own font. So I'm gonna exit out of preview, and then we're gonna go over here to tools, and we're gonna to go to font editor. And then this is gonna open up the font builder here. And then we are going to uh, go to, um, we're gonna to go to add, and then we're gonna name this um, uh, crazy car font. You can name it whatever you want. And then I really like Montrock uh, as a, um, uh, or Montroque as a, uh, I'm not really sure how to uh, pronounce it, um, but I really like this uh, uh, font type as a um, score a label because I just think it looks very game-esque. So we're gonna turn off the gradient. We're gonna make the main color be just off-white. You don't wanna go t all the way white. You wanna go just off. You, you wanna avoid going full saturation usually. We're gonna draw a little stroke in and we're gonna change the, the stroke color to something dark, but not, uh, not too, too dark. You don't wanna go full saturated dark usually. You wanna be careful about doing that. Um, okay, cool, a little bit of a stroke is nice. And then we're gonna draw in a drop shadow and then heck yes, this looks more like a video game um, scores. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of the font builder. 
We're going to select our font now as crazy car font and let's take a look. Okay, I like it, I like it. One thing is I'm seeing that the font is a little bit small. So we're gonna go back to opening up the font uh, builder here and we're gonna change the font size to 100. Um, oops, that's the, font, that's the font size on the default font. Um, we need to go to crazy car font and change the font size to 100. Okay, perfect. That's gonna make it a lot bigger and it's gonna make it look nice and fresh um, on our UI. So let's go ahead, let's press play. Okay, cool, I like it. Um, let's go ahead, let's position it just a little bit closer. Yeah, just like a little bit closer to the tool. And then I wanna make it just a tiny bit smaller. So I'm gonna change the scale to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and then, yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, cool. I might move it just a smidge over to the right. Okay, cool, all right. So now that we got that squared away, let's work on the game over UI. So we'll exit out of the preview again. Let's go to the game over UI, and then we're gonna bring in another points label, okay? So we ha you can't use the same label um, as, uh, the, as the other one. Um, and uh, you, you can't use this, this same label. Um, you need to bring in a brand new uh, a BB asset in here and drop it into this UI. And we're actually gonna re rename this so that it's more unique. So we're gonna say, you know, game over points label. You know, so that we can that way we can differentiate between um, between you know this this mind map here, um, this um, or this node map here, and this node map. If they're both named points, it's very hard to tell which one's which. So let's go ahead. Let's exit out of if collide. Let's get rid of all of these that old stuff that we did last time. We're gonna skip stick to edge for right now, but you might want to add that in later if you feel like it. Um, okay, and then let's go ahead and let's bring in um, another default font label. Let's uh, type in our user text as game and then change it to crazy car font. Okay, we'll do game and then we'll do, I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard and make a copy and then do over. Okay, game over, I like it. And then let's uh, do another copy and we'll say your score or let's do best score first, best score. Okay, and let's uh, hold shift down, make this a little smaller. Get this, yeah, get this a little bit more centered. Okay, great, best score. We'll put this guy right here, right about there in the middle. And then we'll add in another label here and we'll say, okay, this is going to be crazy car font, it'll be the score type, it'll be uh, world type all, points, this time it'll be best, we'll do left alignment, and stick to edge works too. Okay, cool, let's go ahead and make a copy of this one. Let's hold shift down so that I can move things along an axis. If you hold shift down and you move things, it allows you to line things up a lot easier. So I'm gonna hold and shift down, I'm releasing, and now I'm gonna do your score, Okay, perfect. And then we're gonna make a couple copies of these two and then hold shift down and shift them right about here. Okay, and then probably wanna move this down a little bit more. Okay, great. And then this one you wanna change from best to current. Okay, great. All right, let's go ahead, let's save our game again. Let's press play. Let's see how our, let's see how our game's doing. So our score label up there at the top is looking good. Let's see, let's get th a score of three. Okay, and here, here's our game over UI. All right, that's looking good too. And our best score is working. Our, let's check to see if your score is working. So this time we'll just get one. And then, okay, yeah, uh, my best score is three, but I, that time I got one, so maybe I could beat it next time. Okay, great, so this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and end part three here, and we're gonna move on to part four of this series. If you enjoyed this video, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see you in part four.